As for the downside, I, I'm really struggling. I've thought of a least favourite thing. Have you? What's your least favourite Brexit. thing? Brexit. Brexit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Liberation. Today we're speaking to Jackie and Mark and their four little dogs and they live in a truck that they named The Beast. If you want to support what we do, we've got a members channel going, that's all behind the scenes, vlogs, bloopers, things like that. And we've got merch up and running as well, if you want to support us, so check it out and back to the video. Well, we're Jackie and Mark and we live in The Beast, which is this Volvo N10 truck that we converted ourselves. We live in there permanently, it's our permanent home. We've been travelling full time since 2016. We gave up work, bought four dogs, accidentally bought a caravan and then while we were celebrating with the champagne about our new purchase we decided that we were going to uh, sell everything we own, rent out the house and go travelling for maybe three years. That was back in 2016 so here we are in uh, 2023 and we have no intention of stopping anytime soon have we? We've been in The Beast, um, we bought that on the 13th of December 2020. We decided once Boris Johnson got elected that uh, Brexit was rather going to scupper our, our plans to tour Europe. So we decided that we were going to go to Mongolia. Clearly our caravan wasn't going to make it across the Gobi Desert. So uh, that's why we bought this truck on a whim, blind off the internet. <laughs> and it's been our home ever since. Last year we went for about a 10 month trip and then this year we're, we're planning to spend a year um, traveling over land over to Romania and Bulgaria and then on into uh, Western Turkey. Travel's always been our passion when we were working. Most of our disposable income went on sort of traveling around the world on long haul visits. And we always had a sort of a pang of desire to give up work early. We've got a lot of friends who, who live this lifestyle for varying reasons. A lot of them because they don't have other choices. A lot of them, maybe they have choices, but they just prefer to live this sort of lifestyle because it's very, it's very freeing. I must admit in uh, lockdown, we were stuck in a, in a house. I'm in a very lovely house in a very lovely place for eight months, but I must admit, when you've when you've been used to travelling around, it was it was almost became like a cage after that time. As nice as it was in, in location and um, and sort of what it was in itself, we we're just desperate to get away. So it kind of builds in a problem in its own, really. That uh, yeah, it's a lovely lifestyle, mm. but I don't know how we're going to stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> You might wonder why we uh, why we chose something of this size and design uh, to do our travels, but yeah, we travel slowly. We do, we, it, you know, it's the journey. It's not about going places. I mean, this year we have a very vague destination because you need to point the van in a direction. So we're aiming for Turkey. There's, it's not important whether we get there or not. Um, if we if we like a place a lot, we'll stop there for longer. If we don't like a place, we'll we'll move on faster. So we decided we needed a lorry for the Mongolian trip and we just started scouting the internet. Found this, fell in love with it. After one bottle of wine we decided it was, we still had the sense to decide it was, it was, way, too, it was way too big and way too heavy. And the following morning we, we woke up and we paid the deposit because we just fell in love with it. So uh, it's, people say it's a go anywhere truck and in, in some ways it is. I mean the size hasn't hasn't been a major problem if you're a competent and confident uh, driver. There are very few places where I've had to turn around, uh, probably two places I've ever had to turn around. It's the weight that's the problem. It's sitting now at 16 tonnes. So it did restrict some of the places that we wanted to wanted to go to. But on the other hand, it is a, it's a proper overland vehicle and it opens up a lot of the, uh, the wilderness for us that you wouldn't otherwise get to. So mm. we just fell in love with it really. The bull nose, the design, <laughs> I mean, everyone loves it. And we drive along the street. It's just so nice to see the smiles and the shackers and the thumbs up and the, and the punch in the air and, uh, and everything on people's faces. It, it kind of gives joy to us and it seems to give joy to a lot of people when we're driving along as well. 
Well, this is the Beast, 9.6 litre uh, Volvo truck, 3.85 high, which gets us under most bridges, 2.5 wide and uh, 9.6 long. She requires a, a class two license to drive, so I passed that last Friday. Just to introduce her, she's a, a Volvo N10. She was built in 1990. Although she was 30 years old when we bought her, she actually had four and a half thousand kilometres, not miles, but kilometres on the clock. So she was effectively a brand new truck. She was in really, really good condition. Mm. We knew nothing about trucks when we bought her, mm. but uh, everyone who knows anything has said we've actually landed on our feet, which was uh, very much more luck than judgment. <laughs> Six new tyres, that, uh, that was seven grand just for the tyres. Um, which is about a third of what we paid for the truck. They yeah. will do us for, I mean, at least yeah. 10 years now. So over that period of time, it's something we thought we can't compromise on safety. No. So we've got a spare wheel there that weighs about 100 kilograms. So it winches down. Oh, the winching down's fine. The winching up's hard yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got one, one of our two water tanks just the other side of the spare wheel there as well. So that's a 350 litre water tank. It's a left-hand drive truck, we spend most of our time on the continent, so for resale as well, left-hand drive vehicles, are, it gives us a bigger market. I can't imagine ever selling it, to be honest, because we love it so much. <laughs> but, uh, so the cab? Yeah, the dogs travel up here with us as well, it's really simple. Being a 1990 truck as well, nothing electronic. It's just nuts and bolts, and um, if you're travelling around, there's always going to be someone that's going to be able to fix your problems for you. The dogs travel up here, one of them, that's their bed, one, another one there, and then two of them down the middle there. So yeah, the dogs always travel up in the front with us. Um, I mean, the steps, can't take credit. I and mean, this was my mate Pete. I mean, they're very convenient. They just, just fold in and top step folds in and you're done. And then this all locks up as well. Yeah, the door's conventional sort of house door is, so it's got the five locks on there to make it really secure. And the windows, they're made to measure with their metal. They've got safety glass in them. And the hooks, we haven't got a built-in awning. These are just, we just carry a awning sheet. So we just tie it on there and we've got some extendable uh, poles. I mean, most of the time we're wild camping, so most of the time you can't really put things like that up anyway you have to be a bit undercover we used to have loads of stuff inside but we've put an 800 litre water tank inside as well so we've got 1150 litres of water on board which gives us about six weeks um, off grid now we've got 100 litres of lpg for our heating hot water and cooking and that'll last us three months yeah 1150 litres of water that's to be honest that'll last us comfortably six weeks and if we were careful it could last us longer than that storage space under there so these are all our masks and sails underneath all our recovery gear sand ladders chocks and this is all a little bit damaged there someone uh, someone's tried to crowbar the door off there but they'd have been very disappointed because it's just got oils and it's got all the stuff I don't want to put inside in there so and then these used to be inside the windsurf boards they're a bit old and sort of worn so and the barn doors all open up so if we're in a beautiful place that's another advantage you can just sit on the bed and just look out to sea or yeah I mean it's idyllic it's beautiful we're pretty self-sufficient for about six weeks. I mean, even, even in weather like we've got today, our batteries are 100% charged. We've got uh, 1,300 watts of solar panels on the roof. Got a uh, 460 uh, amp hour lithium battery on board. It's all Victron now. So, so our electrical system is, is very efficient now. And I don't, think, I don't think it's dropped under about 94% uh, battery charge. Even in, even in weather conditions like this. As Mark says, even on a dull day, we're usually sort of fully charged by about midday. So at the moment, we just heat with LPG and that's been absolutely fine. We've had no problems getting LPG in, in Europe. But as you stray f further afield, then sometimes that can be an issue. So we will put in a diesel heater just to help with that. So on the other side, there's just the water tank no, behind the cab, no, isn't there? No, there's and, another uh, storage box there, but yeah, nothing, nothing. Storage much else, boxes yeah. and things. Regarding parking spaces, I must admit it was something that I thought would be a lot more of a problem um, than it has been with a truck of this size. We use the, the standard applications such as Park for the Night, Campy, um, iOverland. Mark's also very good at researching places using Google Earth. Remarkably, it's not been a problem in any way as much as we thought it might be initially. We've been moved on once in two years and we were pushing our luck. We had our laundry out in a, in a, uh, in a quiet car park in, in Italy. But that's the only time we've ever been moved on because we, we pick the right places to stay. 
we always litter pick and we make sure we're seen to be litter picking as well. So we leave the place better than we found mm -hmm. it. We never overstay our welcome. Regarding things, I mean, there's practicalities such as doing your shopping. But I mean, I always quote the Coca-Cola rule, which is that wherever I've ever been in the world, including, you know, tiny little villages in Ecuador or something like that, there's always Coca-Cola. And you have to think to yourself, how does the Coca-Cola get there? And it's in trucks. So to be honest, getting to places has really not been um, that much of a problem. I mean, it was important when we bought the vehicle, we wanted one that already had a box uh, on the back. So it was just no doors, no windows. It just had the barn doors at the back. Inside was just a, a, an empty aluminium box. The dictating factor, really, we do a lot of sports, so we we windsurf, we ski, we paddleboard, and um, I mean, we're full time in this, so we've got to carry everything with us, winter sports, summer sports, everything. Yeah, you know, we've, got, we've got two big uh, stand-up paddleboards in there as well, and a couple of bikes. So, so I mean, the dic dictating factor really was fit all the stuff in that we needed to fit in, and then kind of build, build the interior around what we had. Second thing was, I like bed. I like lying in bed, especially when you open the barn doors up and you're in a wilderness somewhere and it just brings the whole lot in. So I wanted a big bed. We wanted colour. We wanted something that felt like home, that had a bit of a personality about it. So yeah, when you look inside, you'll see, yeah, we have had a bit of a colour explosion in there, but it, but it's, it's warm and it's friendly and it's welcoming and it, it just feels nice to be in there. But yes, we did do the build ourselves, but with a lot of help. Now part of the, the reason we chose to travel over land was because of the dogs. It's a really lovely lifestyle because their house never changes, their home is familiar, they're, they're in the truck and although the truck moves and the outside is different, you know, then they feel secure with their home, that, that doesn't change. And then we always do try to choose places that are going to be great for them to walk. They love water, so we'll often park up on a beach or next to a river so that they can play in the water. To be honest, I think this is a very good lifestyle for dogs. <laughs> I think they enjoy it. They have been traveling since they were one year old. So, I mean, it is truthfully all, all they've ever known, but they do seem quite, quite happy with that. You know, they do seem to enjoy their lives. Mm. Right, well welcome to our home. This is uh, the interior of the beast, which we designed all ourselves, very much with a view to being off grid for at least four to six weeks at a time. Something essential to that is our fridge. So we, we bought the biggest fridge freezer that we could. Now this is a, a two-way fridge. It's a compressor fridge, which tends to keep temperature a little bit more um, effectively than something like uh, the ammonia absorption fridges. For Unfortunately, because everything you see in here that isn't glass on the roof is solar panels. Mark mentioned earlier we have 1300 watts of solar, so that powers this uh, no problem. So that's our refrigeration unit. I always sort of say, um, wherever two or three van lifers are gathered, they always start to discuss toilets. So this is our facilities. So we have basically a wet room in here with a shower inside. We've got a separating loo, basically separates the, the solids and um, the liquids. So that's something we don't have to worry about chemicals or polluting the environment with chemicals. It just makes life a lot easier to, to dispose of. These are just skis, we use these, this is a, a display and storage and practicality. We use it as a towel rail as well. But these are our, our skis that we, we do actually use. I think when you uh, live in a small space, you have to be multifunctional. So yeah, yeah these are decoration and uh, storage and uh, practicality. The electrics box here. As I say, we recently had this refitted by the guys at Blue Fix. If we'd known what we were doing uh, when we first built the truck, we would have gone with the Victron electrics because I think they are well known. They're, they're not cheap, they don't come cheap, but they are very, very good. And one of the great things about this is that if we're off grid, actually the guys at Blue Fix can tap into this via the, the internet and troubleshoot for us. So we've got this uh, MultiPlus, it's a, a 3000 watt inverter. So we can actually run power tools if we want the solar control and we've got the two battery to battery chargers. 
So while we're driving, we can also charge our battery from the alternator of the truck. So it's just a backup if the solar isn't charging or keeping us charged. So at the moment, I can see that I've got 100, even on a dull day, I've got 120 watts coming in from my um, solar, solar charging. The fairy lights are, are just really, they, they make me happy. And they're just lovely, you know, sort of day or night. It just makes the, the interior very atmospheric. We have brighter lights. We've got LED lights, which again are sort of low energy and they're dimmable. We have the camera here. That's a security camera. It's something we use just to keep an eye on things if we're not in the truck we can actually access it through our, our mobile phones. The cupboard down here is where our Roma battery is, a 470 amp hour lithium battery. This is the heater, it's a, a Propex LPG heater and that keeps us toasty. We have never been cold and even when we spent three months at 1800 metres in the Alps and it got down to minus 17, we've never been cold. We've got 50 mils of um, Kingspan insulation plus then we boarded it out with spruce ply. The box is very, very well insulated and often if we put the heater on for full for 10 minutes, you absolutely expire with the heat and then here we have the kitchen area we decided not to bother with an oven because it's just not something we use and I'm quite happy uh, cooking on a hob it is a proper fouring hob so I can actually get four pans on this so I'm, I am really pleased with that we've also got an extractor here which obviously helps condensation is always the enemy of van lifers quite an interesting little feature that we've got here which is these are the trade plates that we actually bought the the beast back from Rotterdam on. Um, she's quite a European project really because she's a Swedish truck being a Volvo. We bought her from the Belgian army. We purchased her from a dealer in Holland and brought her back on Austrian plates. As for what's in my drawers, um, <laughs> it's, it's not a secret. <laughs> Um, we basically keep all our uh, kitchen equipment in here, plates and pans um, and so forth, carefully kind of joined together or corralled, I think is probably the word, to make sure that things don't move. The cupboards up here, we've basically got food. I think the key to living in a small space has got to be storage. So, we, you know, these we've got these tambour doors, which are brilliant. They just kind of roll up and then over the bed, over that way, um, we have all our clothes. Clearly, we, we live quite a minimal life. Everything we own is in here. Um, and Mark and I own basically 10 kilograms of clothing each. <laughs> and it's a case of one in one out but I really love that minimal lifestyle I feel it's a very freeing thing you know just to have what you need all you need you know I don't feel that we lack anything but you know we, we just have everything we need oh well this is our habitation area as you can see we did go for uh, the explosion in the paint factory kind of uh, colour scheme but it, do, it does make us happy and then uh, as Mark said earlier, you know, something that's very important to us is to have a comfortable bed. A red line for me as a, as a van lifer was that I just didn't want to be kind of doing a, a jigsaw puzzle of cushions. When I'm tired, I want to go to bed. A lot of our windsurfing equipment is under the bed, so we have a big garage area under the bed as well as a large water tank. Um, and then the arms of the sofa are actually built around our stand-up paddle boards. They're 12 feet long, so we slide those in on the sides. The bed itself, it's, um, it's slightly more than a super king size, but then it has to fit six of us. Mm. So Mark and I usually get pushed to the edges and the dogs basically spread out in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> There's more cupboard space up there. If you live in a small space, you really need to have places to, to put things. Underneath the, the mattress, you can see there's storage under there. That's our 800 litre water tank. It goes quite a long way across, so that's a big water tank in there. And then we've got the bike. Yeah, the bikes are in that side and then um, yeah, to storage. We've got, yeah, we've got washing machine in the back this time of year. It's drying, not washing, that's the problem. So we do use, in the winter, we still use the laundrette. In the summertime, we just use, we do our own laundry and just hang it outside. We've got a pizza oh, we oven have, in the back. Oh, we have, yeah, we've got a portable. <laughs> Someone made us a pizza yeah. up the top of the mountain in the snow in uh, Italy when we were skiing, and it was so good and so quick. It's like, gotta have one of those something we wanted to do was to make sure that this was light and a happy you know sort of space to live in so yeah we cut these um 
sort of roof, roof lights in. I mean, everything that isn't glass in here is basically solar panel. So you can see how much solar we have actually got up top. Probably a bit of an excess, but certainly we don't run, run short of power. It's a very, very light and pleasant space to live in. In terms of what the future holds, I mean, when we set out, we thought maybe three years we'll sort of, we'll live this, well, and that was, what, seven years ago? Yeah. Yeah, we thought maybe three years, but it's, um, it's a lovely lifestyle. You see so many places, you meet so many new people, and it broadens your horizon. It's an old sort of phrase, but there's, you know, the best education is travel, you know, you learn so much of the things that matter, really, rather than just stuff that you'll, uh, you'll ne never need to use again. In terms of sort of when we'll stop, we have no no vision or intention of stopping this lifestyle in the near future. But I'm sure one day, I'm convinced we'll, we'll wake up one day and it'll be like Forrest Gump when he was running across America and he just said, right, enough running now, sort of mm. things. Yeah, I think I think it'll be it'll be like that. I mean, our, our entry into this was was that way, and I think our, our exit from that will be different. But I can't see us living a conventional lifestyle. It will be another life. It will be a it will be another. Either we'll be on a boat or we'll ship ourselves off to somewhere else and, um, and, live, and live a different life. There are so many lives to live that are conventional and the problem is that people get, people get caught up in the conventional way of living and they don't put enough thought into what they want from life really and identifying sort of where they want to get to and, and how they're going to get there because it doesn't, it doesn't need a fortune, you don't need to be a millionaire to, to find a different way to live but you know everything steers you in the way of a conventional lifestyle, overspending on stuff that doesn't matter, accumulating loads of possessions and belongings that don't matter, you know not focusing Focusing on the important things in life, which is experiencing and, and people and, you know, just uh, being happy, really. I mean, I've obviously said that sort of uh, there are other ways to live, but yeah, I mean, you, you need to find a way to sustain yourself and, uh, and pay for the bills and pay for the repairs and, and feed and clothe yourself, obviously. We took a conventional approach initially because although we live, we, we like an exciting lifestyle, but we like a little bit of security as well. And we've lived a conventional life with busy jobs, earning money, but we always put the excess away rather than buying bigger cars and bigger houses and, and lots of material things we put money away. So it enabled us at 50 years old to give up work and, and live the lifestyle that we live. We do know a lot of other people that have chosen to do, to make a different approach and the security isn't so important to them and they're happy that they'll deal with problems as they arise rather than sort of planning for um, a security net you know enjoying the time when they're younger which has a strong argument for it when you're younger and you're more fit and able and you can do much more but having that freedom at, at that time of your life is really appealing We've always done the sports and it's it's enabled us to stay a little bit fitter maybe and more able to sort of continue with those things as, as we've got older. Yeah, I'm 61 and I won't say Jackie, that's rude, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm two years but, younger. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but Jackie's younger than me, yeah, yeah. so yeah. Well, I think that's an important thing to say about older people. We've retired, but I still feel like we're moving on at a pace. I still mm. feel like there's things that we can achieve yeah. and things that we can do. And we haven't let age be a barrier. And obviously we've been very fortunate with our health. Not everybody is so lucky, mm. but I don't see that, you know, just because mm. you reach a certain age that you no. have to stop, you know, skiing or windsurfing mm. or traveling mm. or, you know, doing mm. things that you love. As Mark mm. said before, you don't need mm to lead a conventional life and, and follow what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And also I think it is important to make the point that you don't have to be a millionaire to have this lifestyle. You know, we haven't won the lottery. We just worked hard, saved and had a plan that this was what we wanted to do. And then ultimately this is our home and compared to a normal house, it's a very cheap lifestyle. We have to pay for fuel. Um, but you know our food costs and so forth are the same as they would be if we were living in a house or sometimes a lot cheaper if you're in places like Albania where the cost of living is significantly less. This is actually a very cheap lifestyle so it's certainly achievable if you put your mind to it. My favourite thing about the, the lifestyle that we live, and as much as it's fabulous seeing all these places and people will initially think about all the, all the places we've been to and all the sites we've seen, it's the people that we meet on the travels. Mm. You know, meeting lots of different people from different backgrounds with different life stories. It, it sounds a bit kits really to say it, but it is genuinely the truth. We've met so many lovely people and we've got friends all over 
So that was that was that was the easy one, sort of what's my favourite thing. I could have chosen from about half a dozen things. What's my least favourite? My favourite thing about this lifestyle is just that every day is different. We can wake up in a different place, up a mountain, on a beach. The variety is just stupendous. I, I absolutely love that about it. As for the downside, I, I'm really struggling to, to think of, of one as well, to be honest. I've thought of a least favourite thing. Have you? What's your least favourite Brexit. thing? Brexit. Brexit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much for having us. It's uh, been a real pleasure to meet you and chat to you. If anyone's interested in following the travels of the beast, I blog on www.worldwidewalkies.com so you can find me on there. I am also a travel author and I've written six books about our travels since we gave up work in 2016. They're basically humorous travel memoirs. The idea is to entertain and inform, so although they are stories um, and they follow very much um, a steep learning curve of a lot of mishaps as we'd never had a caravan before and obviously within a month we sold up and, and took to the road. So the books basically follow the stories uh, of, of that and how that you know, went in a, terms of misadventures. And then my subsequent books I'm working on at the moment will be about our travels with, with the beast. You can find my books on Amazon, there's links to it from my blog. It's the Adventure Caravanning with Dog series. Thanks to everyone for watching. Oh, Ruby's had enough, she's off now, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks to Jackie and Mark for showing us around. What a beast of a truck that is. And make sure you check out Jackie's books as well. She's an award-winning author. They'll all be linked below. And if you do enjoy the content that we create and you do want to support what we do, we've got the members channel and the merch store. So that'll all be linked down below. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.